G'day everyone. Well, for today's autopsy, we have a Tecumseh model number 6B89030200 fridge compressor. This is a, uh, must have been out of a fairly big fridge. I didn't actually get to see it, but it's been my doorstop for the past two years. I found it on City School. Um, I probably shouldn't have been carrying things like this home, and I was puking quite a bit of oil down the leg of my uniform, but oh well. None of the teachers noticed, I did get away with it. But, ever since then, I've been working out ways to cut the top off, and it seems Aussie 50's way works the best, which, there's the weld there, and you've got the top and bottom halves of the uh, casing, and where they've welded it, you'd cut just below that, on the seam. So I've done that all the way around, and then you can pry the top off. You do need an angle grinder to do this with an uh, ultra-fine cut-off wheel. Make sure it's fairly decent quality grinder, but those wheels are only about two bucks at Bunnings. If you enjoy pulling stuff apart, they're definitely worth the effort. But as you can see, you can just lift the top clean off. There's the other uh, lip from the bottom part. You just cut it clean off. It's really not much inside the uh, top housing. Some of the bigger ones you'll find a uh, spring, a uh, retainer to uh, keep the whole pump assembly uh, stable. But this one doesn't have it since it's fairly small. Yeah, that was the first attempt. We tried with a big three inch grinding wheel, me and the old man, and it made quite a stink. It burnt a bit of the oil, it almost set it on fire, and it took us about half an hour just to get that far, so. We sort of gave up and just left it for the two years as it being the doorstop, and here it is now. But these are your uh, accumulators. This is the discharge side, and that's the suction side. Those are your intake pipes there. So a refrigerant enters in from the condenser, sorry, the evaporator coil, through cooling the motor into here through these accumulators, which then work their way in through the reed valves into the cylinder. It's just like a normal air compressor, except on this one it's nut and bolted a uh, big end, just like a car engine actually. And that just spins around, it's a little piston and crankshaft. It's a little bit awkward because that's a discharge muffler on the top, but that just spins around, drawing it in, and compressing it, and then forcing it into the discharge accumulators here through this pipe, through the discharge muffler, and then out to the condenser coil and expansion valve. But I've got the uh, spring retainers, or uh, actually should I say spring mounts off. And I found out why they can this unit. That's one of them. And as you can see, that one's on. It's just stretched back because it's caught on that, but these just press in and lock in like that and hold the, uh, the pump up. But what's happened is that one's broken off and drop the whole side of the pump down so it's been rubbing and it's put particles in the oil it was a bit nasty and made a mess of it but I'm gonna uh, take this pump out and uh, go into a bit more detail on how it works what it all looks like and uh, yeah stay tuned here's the main pump assembly out with the motor stator and everything they are Still a bit of oil left in the housing, surprisingly. I thought I completely got rid of it by um, losing it down my leg. But these little tabs here, they're what the, uh, the spring mounts press into. You just use a screwdriver and just uh, lever it back and forward until they pull out. And then you can lift the whole pump assembly out. But that's your uh, connection for our power. That goes on there. There's the inside of it there. Well, I believe it goes start, run, common, or it could be the other way around, start, run, common. But, unfortunately I can't really run this because I didn't get the uh, capacitor or the relay. These do have a uh, starting relay, but if this thing's repairable, I will uh, have a look online and see what I can get. Because it'd be good to have just one of these as a uh, working unit that I can show people how it works. Take it to school, plug it in, and... But, uh... Next thing will be to get this stator off, and then we can have a look at the R, uh, see if we can turn it over and have a look at it. There's the R uh, stator off. It's just four through bolts that hold it onto the R uh, crankcase. 
You just take those off and you get it, get it off. It is a uh, single pole. You got north and south on it. And those are the uh, start windings in there. I can tell that because they're a lot thinner than these. These are the uh, run windings. And those will be start. Like I said in the uh, GMF bets mode of restoration. The thinner wires on the windings, those will be start. And the thicker they are, are the uh, run. So it's the uh, stator. It's fairly thick. And as you can see, it's all laminated. It's not varnished or anything. You can actually move these uh, lashings around on it. Those are what they use to uh, just keep it all together. Stop it getting wrapped around the rotor. Which is showing signs of getting hot. This thing's probably seized and it's just triggering the uh, thermal cutout. But that's the oil pump there. It's just a little spiral inside that tube. And it draws oil up through the uh, centre of the rotor. And lubricates the bearings. And then slings it out on the top just to keep the top of the crankcase uh, damp with oil. But next up we'll just get uh, all this apart. We'll have a look at the uh, valves. I'll just sit the camera on top of the stator. But this is all it does when it's in the uh, when it's in motion. It's just drawing refrigerant in through the uh, suction pipes there, through these valves, and then compressing it in the uh, cylinder, which will be inside there, and then out the discharge valves, which they're still working all right. You can hear them. Uh, that noise you can hear, that's the uh, valves working, which is, if I can put this thing back together and get some new oil on it, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get it working, but I'm going to have to look at prices on uh, relays and things for it, but it's easily feasible. Here's the uh, valves from it, and uh, cylinder head, You've got suction valve there and discharge valve at the top, it's got a little baffle on it to stop it going too high up and jamming against the uh, cylinder head since it is fairly rough but it's just a little bit of cast iron cast steel whatever a little gasket goes on and that just goes on like that the whole lot goes onto the uh, top of the cylinder which is in pretty good condition actually there's a little bit of scoring on this side but hardly enough to uh, cause any problems or noise but it's about 15 mil stroke and uh, about one inch diameter bore. It's uh, it's fairly decent, as you know, it was a fairly big compressor, as you clearly saw. But I don't think I'm going to have much luck getting the rotor off or getting any further down than this because that rotor will be pressed on or heat shrunk so that basically they heat it up and stuff it on and let it cool down and it uh, shrinks and grabs tight. But, yeah, you get the rough idea. It's, uh, if you want to see complete teardowns on these, go to our Aussie 50s channel and go to his, he's got some really early videos of, uh, pulling apart refrigerant compressors. I think his biggest was a, uh, Bitsa semi-hermetic, um, V4, which, that was one of my favourite compressor teardowns he's done. So, uh, I'll post a link to it, actually. He's done a... I think there's four parts to that, but yeah, sort of concludes this autopsy really. I'm going to uh, put this unit back together and uh, see if I can get it working. I might do a bit of research into starting caps and relays for it and yeah, hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.